Hello and welcome back to another video on my channel. Uh, today I will be doing a part 2 or 3 uh, to the Irish High Kings uh, series that I'm doing. Uh, this is part 2 of many, uh, many, many, many uh, videos to come. Uh, and it might be a little bit shorter than my average video length, um, but we'll, 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 uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so, we left off from the death of Tigurn Mass. Uh, now, Tigurn Mass was um, the High King of Ireland uh, for a very long duration, um, about 80 years or so. Now, he, uh, as I mentioned in my last video, died with three quarters of the Irish male population while they were mass worshipping and sacrificing to the evil deity Crom Cuach. I think that's how it's spelt. Uh, also, uh, I don't speak Irish, so I'm pronouncing these names phonetically as an English speaker rather than from a Gaelic, uh, Irish Gaelic perspective, but I apologise if I inevitably get something wrong. Um, yeah, uh, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, so Tigan Mass and three quarters of the Irish male population died. Um, and so the remaining one quarter of the population elected this chap here, Aochaid, um, to succeed Tigan Mass as the next High King of Ireland. And um, Aochaid was the son of the King of Tara, who was actually a, a descendant of Eith. Uh, and this is where the... Um, Eith was the reason why the Milesians actually came to Ireland in the first place. Uh, now, Aotrade's reign is remembered for the fact that he segregated people based on clothing, or vice versa. Uh, so if you were a slave, you were only allowed to wear one colour. Uh, I think all the way up to about seven uh, for a king or a queen. So, um, you know, the nobles would have been in these beautiful, elaborate clothing, um, you know, items of clothing beautiful uh, brooches and gems and everything, um, whereas the peasants and churls, that's a Saxon word I know, but, you know, peasants and farmers would have been restricted to one or two um, kind of outfits. So, yeah, so uh, a very interesting thing there. Uh, now, he was uh, killed in the Battle of Tara, which is ironic as his father was the king of Tara, uh, Tara by some very distant uh, cousins, uh, Sobiace and Kerm sorry, Kermner Finn. Uh, again, uh, I don't think that's how you pronounce it, but we're going to go with that. Uh, sorry for that. I uh, got a notification. Uh, now, they were uh, descendants, distant descendants of Mil Espania. Uh, so, like I say, they are uh, members of the royal family. Now, these two were the first kings to have come from Ulaid, which is in the north. Um, and they divided the country between them. They ruled as co-monarchs. Uh, so Sobiace got the northern half uh, of the country um, f that he ruled from County Antrim, and Kermna uh, got the southern half uh, that he ruled from County Cork. Now they ruled for 40 years until um, Sobiace died at the hands of uh, this guy here, Aochaid II. Um, oh, sorry, um, I, a different Aochaid. He, uh, Sobiace was killed by Aochaid Men, who was the son of the King of the Fomorians. Sorry, uh, I got a bit confused there with my notes. Um, whereas his brother Kermner died in the same year at the hands of a different Aochaid, this guy, who was a descendant of Conmile, if we remember him from the last video. Now, there's kind of a War of the Roses sort of um, thing going on here, uh, and most of the conflict in these legends is driven purely by revenge and I call them legends this almost certainly didn't happen uh, there might have been kings in Ireland at this time probably um, although they were more likely to have been local chieftains um, in charge of um, a hamlet or a village uh, sorry somebody's um, got a hammer downstairs so if you hear some taps that's what it is um, but there's kind of a War of the Roses type conflict between Eber Finn and uh, Ur, sorry, Ur, honestly, Urimion, um and their branches of the family. So it goes back and forth a bit, but you'll see in a minute um, there's a lot of murder. Anyway, 
Um, so Eotrades was um, the next king, and he killed this guy here, Smeargle, uh, who was the grandson of Tigurn Mass. Um, and then Smeargle um, was avenged by his son Fiatru, who killed Eotrades. So this is where we get the first sort of uh, honor, well, not honor killings, but you know, um, family rivalries, which is really a euphemism for what uh, this was. He uh, had an epithet, uh, Le Brain. Now, by the way, a lot of these kings have epithets which are quite long in Gaelic. I've only included some of them that were a bit shorter, uh, but be aware that these guys often had uh, epithets. So his uh, epithet was Le Brain, which comes um, from um, kind of a water source that burst in his reign and it formed the river Le Brain. Uh, he fought a sea battle against the descendants of uh, Eber Finn. So, again, this branch of the family. Um, and he killed Mophabus. Uh, now, Mophabus was the son of Eotrade II. And um, in return for killing um, Mophabus, Mophabus' son, uh, Eotrade Mumu, uh, actually killed Fiatru. Uh, now, Eotru Mumu then became the next uh, king. Uh, oh, by the way, he became uh, a king uh, at the Battle of Slabe um, Bel Gatain, I think. Uh, now, his epithet, Mumu, is very important as it um, became the name, um, well, sorry, Munster, the province of Munster, or the kingdom of Munster, was actually named after him uh, and his epithet. And of course, Munster was one of the foremost kingdoms throughout the um, early medieval period, and really throughout uh, Irish um, history before you know the English came in and colonised it. Um, but yeah, so quite an important link there. Uh, so Munster is named after this guy. And uh, now he ruled for uh, twenty-one years and uh, fought many battles against this family, the descendants uh, of this guy. Um, but he was eventually killed by uh, Onegus. Um, sorry, Ongus. Uh, I, my pronunciation is awful today, as it always is. So I am very, very sorry. Anyway, um, so this was at the Battle of Clue. And um, uh, one um, Gnus um, eventually became king. Um, and he allegedly conquered Scotland during the reign of his father, Again, I apologise for the hammering downstairs. Uh, now, apparently he, like you say, um, invaded and took over Scotland, um, which is pretty far-fetched for me, even for a legend, uh, because he also allegedly fought against the Orkney people. And uh, even the Lombards. Now, the Lombards back then um, didn't live in Italy. That was after the Roman period, so, you know several, I think about two millennium uh, after this, but, you know, they were probably sort of in Pomerania, uh, that kind of area, Poland, Germany, even Denmark, that sort of region. So um, it's very far-fetched that he uh, fought against the Lombards, but this is legend for you. Um, yeah, so uh, he, um, oh, also uh, on the Orkney Islands, um, I plan on making a video pretty soon on the Pictish King, so um, stay tuned for that. Sorry. Okay, now uh, uh, Ongus, uh, sorry, uh, Onegus uh, was killed eventually by Enna, uh, who was the son of Eochu Mumu, and um, of course that was in revenge for uh, Eochu Mumu's death. Um, now that was at the Battle of Carm uh, Carman. Uh, Enna is said to have made uh, silver shields for his nobles. Uh, he ruled for 27 years, uh, or 28 depending on uh, who you ask, uh, before he was killed by this guy, uh, Rothach Tide. Uh, yes, some, something like that. <laughs> um, and um, obviously that was in revenge for uh, this guy's death as well. Um, okay, now it's at this point that I would like to quickly mention the fact that I, uh, there are different chronologies here. Obviously, because this is legend, uh, there are several sources. Uh, now, the dating is really the, the thing that they uh, tend to nitpick on. I am going from the Annals of the Kingdom of Ireland, uh, also known as the Annals of the Four Masters, uh, abbreviated to AFM. 
and that date, um, well, it's allegedly supposed to be contemporary. Uh, allegedly, again, uh, it dates from uh, 2,242 years after creation uh, until AD 1616. So it's the oldest, uh, and that's why I'm going off it. Also, it's the most consistent. Um, the dates always align. Uh, there's not really uh, an interregnum that's not explained. There was uh, an interregnum um, here in between the death of Tigun Mass and Eochade's succession, but um, that was explained, obviously. Uh, if three quarters of your male population die, there probably would be an interregnum. Um, however, other people might use dates from uh, Geoffrey Keating. He was a 17th century historian and priest. Um, or they might even go off and, excuse me here, the Lebo Gabala uh, Eren, uh, which is another uh, source. I think that's from the medieval period, although uh, the dates on that are a lot more vague. That's uh, more like saying 7th century BC rather than uh, the year uh, 1383 BC, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, just bear in mind that there are uh, several accounts and... Uh, especially with the dates, but I am going off the uh, AFM um, dating system. Anyway, where were we? Um, yeah, so Rothschild, um, he won his kingdom at the Battle of Rain, uh, spelt um, R-A-I-G-N-E, so it might be pronounced uh, very differently. Now, he ruled for 22 years, and this is where another dispute between the different sources comes into play. Uh, the Lebor Gabala uh, Aran uh, gives two different versions of his death. Um, now, in one version, he is um, killed by uh, Setna Art, this guy over here. Uh, but in another uh, version, uh, he's killed um, uh, basically because of his wounds um, in uh, Tara, which we mentioned earlier. And by the way, the reason why Setna Art might have killed him is because... Uh, Rothschild threatened his son Fiatu, uh, and these guys were, uh, well, in fact, yeah, these guys were allegedly um, the relatives of uh, the Milesians through Mill Espana. Now, if you see the amount of generations here, we'll count together. So, uh, from Rothschild, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 10, 11, so 11 generations to get back to here. Whereas these guys, who were apparently alive at the same time, only have to go back one, two, three, four generations. Uh, so again, that's another implausible bit of uh, legend there uh, for you. Uh, so, yeah, it, it makes the chart look a bit off, uh, but apparently that was the case. Especially considering that Tigan Mass lived for about 100 years, uh, according to legend, it's... You know, these guys must have lived for uh, hundreds of years, each one of them. Anyway, uh, Setna Art, he ruled for five years. Um, and for some reason, his son, uh, Fiatu, who he had killed the previous king uh, in defence of, was actually exiled. So Fiatu was exiled. And then he came back from exile at the head of a black fleet with the assist uh, assistance of a very distant cousin called uh, Muenemon. And Munamon was um, a descendant of uh, Eber Finn. So uh, these two came back and killed Setna Art, Fiatu's father. Uh, now there's a legend about flowers of wine uh, that gave uh, Fiatu his epithet. Um, and uh, Fiatu ruled for um, 20 years until he was killed by his former accomplice, uh, Munamon. Anyway, uh, Munamon was from this distant branch of the family, as I mentioned. Uh, he was the first um, king in Irish history to have won a talk. Now, a talk is um, its not somebody who struggles to pronounce the CH sound saying torch. It's actually uh, the thing that Celts sort of wore around their uh, necks. It's that kind of, um, I'm not going to say a necklace, but... Um, kind of a band, uh, a brass or silver or gold band uh, that they wore around their necks. Um, you know, it's it's quite uh, famous um, amongst, you know, um, 
if you picture a Celt, they might be wearing one of those. Kind of a, a nude Celtis, uh, Celtic warrior uh, in blue body paint with a torque around his neck. That's what it is. Um, I can't really edit very well, so um, I won't be able to put a picture on screen, but it's spelt T-O-R-C. Uh, so if you want to search that up in Google, uh, you can find that. Uh, so yeah, a pretty important fashion king, uh, although he died only five years uh, later from the plague um, in Knort. Um, so that's interesting. And he was succeeded pretty um, smoothly by his son. And this is going to be a hard one. Uh, failed uh, Doit. Um, now I'm not going to refer to him as that um, for a second time because I, I really don't want to butcher it a second time. So we'll just say uh, fail. Um, now he is the first king, much like his father, he was fashionable. He is the first king to have made people wear golden rings on their hands, um, not on their fingers, kind of around their um, um, sort of what do you call them again? Wrists. There we are. Uh, so he, again, fashion, um, jewellery, another uh, iconic piece of Celtic gear. And then he was killed by uh, the son of Fiatu, who had um, been killed by uh, Munamon. And his name was Olam Fotler. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that's where we're going to end it now. Um, I've still got to do more research on this. Um, I've kind of been prioritising the Italian charts recently. Uh, but this is still very interesting and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, uh, it's been great. I think my next video is either going to be on the Earls of Warwick or the House of Dandolo. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. And then I plan on also doing, um, as I mentioned earlier, the Pictish Kings um, and maybe even uh, another Italian house. But anyway, that's uh, for the future. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Goodbye.